Hello. We are Geeks Assembled, and me and Susan have uh, got together today to just discuss the uh, second season, or as it says on the screen, part two of Interview with a Vampire. Um, it carries on from where season one left off, and we go forward in time to the 19... Is it the 30s, 40s, with the war? Uh, and we're in Paris. So we will go over to Susan. What are opening thoughts on the uh, second season of this uh, vampiric show? Yeah. Um, again, deeply love this, this series of books. Deeply love the way that Anne Rice writes so sensually. Um, you know the the sensuality of her of her of her storytelling. It's it's you know breathtaking, and um, the actors Jacob Anderson and Asad Zaman. Um, again the the interview parts with with Eric Bogosian playing Daniel Malloy. Um Jacob Anderson plays Louis de Pondelac, who is like um who is Lestat's first uh no, I'm sorry, L Lestat's second offspring. His first offspring was his mom, but they don't haven't gotten there yet in the story, but the and then Assad Zaman plays Armand or uh, Amado or Arun. Uh, he's known by three of her names in the in the um, in the Chronicles of the Vampires, and he's and and what's cool about this is that they 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 start to connected to other parts of this story. I mean, mm -hmm. Lestat, of course, is big time uh, involved with with this, and he's played by Sam Reed, and amazing, and Eric Bogosian playing Daniel Malloy. That, that's excellent casting. You know, you, you just see him, you know, back in the, back in the 70s when he's or 60s when he's trying to interview uh when he's trying to interview our Louis uh in San Francisco and then he it, it's you know he's his second part of the interview which is really what we're, we're we're being sort of regaled with is it takes place in the penthouse of a of a skyscraper in in um in Dubai. Dubai in the in the United Arab Emirates and um he's it's so uh you know it's it it's sort of like the Egyptian um like it's it's a not it's a big nod to the Egyptian beginnings of vampirism as described in these in this book series um other things that are really cool about this are are how it gets it gets at the the core of of louis and lestat's relationship and then it also gets really to the core of of louis and and uh claudia and and how how it deals with her death she and madeline were both killed by the coven uh the the theater de, de vampire in in paris and they're both burned alive in the sun and i mean it's just that's it's so hard for uh louis to to, to do anything about it because he's put down in, in a he's surrounded by by like pebbles and then covered with concrete. I mean, they basically walled him up 
bricked him up and then put him in concrete. I don't know. It's that's a it's a hell of a way to go to sleep forever, you know. He, uh, there was he really didn't go to sleep because there was there was starving him, wasn't they? Yeah. Eventually, he would die of starvation. Right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And Louis is is morose, but he is not the the. Uh, he's not actually the villain in this. I mean, in in this whole series, it's been sort of uh, pointed to the fact that um, Lestat is really the villain. But um, the very end of this, it turns on its head, and it's and the last episode is Louis trying to rediscover Lestat having pushed Armand out of his life. Mm. And uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a lot of really emotionally charged moments. And so there's a lot of startling revelations in this um i i don't i really like these these uh these actors and i like the way this is written for for the telly and um and i think it captures a lot of what what you know i love about the way she writes and the way that uh it it ostensibly talks about like the the liaison between the world of the living and the world of the supernatural in the Talamasca. I mean, it talks about all those things. So, you know, we're going to get some more characters in the in the second and uh, the third and the fourth season because I think that they've green lighted those. I, Stars I, is is covering a lot of Anne Rice's works with yeah. with Chris. Christopher Rice as uh, executive producer. Um, I was going. I was going to ask you something there, Susan, because it does say producer uh, Christopher Rice being Anne Rice's son, isn't he? Yeah. yeah but, but also as well, it says producer on the on the screen as it Anne Rice, and I'm thinking for her. I I I think that they just wanted to make unless sure she's, unless she's doing it from the grave. You think that she has become a vampire or a supernatural she being? She may have been a vampire all along. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's just so amazing. Oh, Lee, what a great idea. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I'm not, I'm not Good head on... cannon. That's now I'm... my head cannon. I'm not slapping on blood, by the way. Sure. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, they do. They do sl slurp on on blood and crystal glasses, which they yeah. never did in the in the books. But that uh, that was so elegant. It was just there for elegance' sake. Oh my gosh. So, uh, yeah, those are my opening thoughts. What about you? Uh, what What did you like about it? What What were your? Well, I've been looking forward to this second season because. I absolutely loved the first season. It, so much so I went out and bought the bought, bought a physical copy. And I will buy the physical copy of this season when it comes out. Um, <clears throat> I did find though, that I think they've dumbed down on the gore in this season. What what, there didn't seem to be much blood and guts in this one as the first season. Um, and also they're sort of dumbed down on the vampire sex. There wasn't much in this. I, and I enjoyed that last season. <laughs> well, that's because apparently Armand and and Louis were, I mean, the, the parts that, that they were supposed to get together, you know, as as you would, they were kept apart. Did you see that they were? He went to bed in his coffin, and he didn't invite Armand in. I mean, there was there was plenty of opportunities for that. Uh, there were moments that that 
yeah, sex could happen. Yeah, it's very sexy now. Let's get it on, boys. And like I mean, so you never did. I mean, I've I've never read the books. I know I said this in the first season. I've never read the books. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm hoping that they do sort of stick to the to the storylines from the books. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um and it, because it's the, sensual, because of her sensual writing, because of that that uh predilection for physical intimacy, shall we say. Yeah. yeah. She she does that so well. Yeah, and um it's she I like the... porn she weren't porn novels under the name Anne Rambling. Oh right. All, all about uh all about sleeping beauty. It was amazing. So but I like the way this has come to this season has brought interview with a vampire to a natural end. Because mm-hmm. um, I have it, uh, season three, it's going to be based on uh, the book Vampire uh, Lestat. Vampire Lestat. So it's going to be a totally different story uh-huh. about him, about him well, and his it's beginning. A- it's going to tell a, a longer tale because Lestat was around long before Louis. And and there, uh, there are more characters that, that are going to be entered in. And the other really important thing about the vampire Lestat is that his, uh, you know, the beginning of the book, he, he's kind of waking up and, and it's like, it's like he is surrounded by beautiful goth rock and he becomes a goth rock star so you see him starting to to compose music yeah. like that in the in the final episode of yeah. This. yeah i mean i i do hope i hope lou is in this next season i do hope because that character and the actor is brilliant mm. um mm. the works go well together sam reed and uh what's his name jacob anderson yeah. Uh, even if if Sam Reed wasn't in this season much, yeah. When he when he was there on the screen, Lestat just stole stole, stole the scene. You know, all eyes was on Lestat, wasn't it? You mm-hmm. know. Um. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I really did. I say apart from the the go wasn't as much and the sex wasn't as much, but the story drew you in. Um. We have got the vampire. Theatre of the Vampires or Circus, Circus of the Vampires, whatever you want to call it, um, with um, Santiago. Mm-hmm. The um, scheming Santiago, played by um, English actor, what's his name now? Ben Daniels. Ben, ben Daniels. Uh, oh, my God. Nailed uh, it. Yeah. Um, perfect. Perfect. Um, and also you've got the new Claudia because the actress who played her in the original series couldn't do the second series. Um, so uh, Delaney Hales took over that character. And you couldn't tell, really, swap from one actor to another. Oh, she I brought didn't in... know that. So let me look yeah, for that. Yeah, it was a different actress. Yeah, um, Bailey, oh, Bailey Beast. Bailey Beast, yeah, I got it. Delaney Hales in season two. Huh. Yeah, wet, okay. wet commitment. Wet commitment couldn't stop the actress filming this one, so they had to get another actress in. So she and she did a damn good job. Yeah, she did. You know, she you, did you, such a good job that I didn't even notice the difference. Very similar looking actresses. That's what I think. Why they went for it. Yeah, you know? of course. Um, it, was, it was excellent casting. I didn't I mean, realize that. That's amazing. And then, and then you say you've got the vampire Amond. Um, Assad Amond. Mesmerized. Th- those eyes. Mm-hmm. I know they were contact lenses, but those eyes, mm-hmm. you could tell as much as, as um, mm-hmm. Louis loved him and trusted him, you just knew there's something wrong. Mm. And the way Daniel was probing and getting information, you knew Armand was going to get his comeuppance in the end. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
and all truth would be out. Hmm. And it just proved that, you know, Lestat was the one really who was meant for Louis. Well, he was the one who was, who was, even though this whole wicked thing was kind of engineered by uh, that coven, mm. the Armand was actually going with the coven and was willing to have Louis killed, Claudia killed. Mm. Madeline even killed. even to the point that he wrote and directed the trial. The trial, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, that was amazing! Like, what what a cool sort of uh, plot device was that script? Yeah? yeah, yeah. With all the the handwritten notes in the margin, and the 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 those notes were written by Armand, and suddenly uh suddenly louis is like oh and he had he had it took him a while to come to terms with what he just heard because i mean it was really brutal what what he and claudia and uh madeline went through yeah and so of course when he discovered that that claudia when he, when he was uh, being fed by uh, Lestat, actually. Wait, who was doing the feeling? I, I, all right, this is a part. I, right. Whose blood was going in? Was that Lestat or was that uh, Armand? That wasn't explained. Okay, okay, so I don't know. So I, it, all, all we know, all we know is, uh -huh. I could, I think it might have been our man because, uh, Louis said I could taste him. Oh, okay. When he, when he drops of blood, so he must, he must know the difference between Lestat and Armand's and blood Armand, for sure. But there again, had he tasted Armand's blood before? Yeah, the, that was that was a good question. So it could have been Lestat what did that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. And and uh, Amon, Amon took the took uh, said he controlled the audience with the banishment thing, but it wasn't. But it wasn't him because no. he'd written it for for death. Yeah. And that's why when he gets to the end, those last three pages of the script, yeah. he's like he throws it down, and he turns and he confronts him. But you know he, he you know he hasn't come to anything too too different from the way he remembered it until the final two or three pages. Mm. Oh my gosh. Well, that was because that was because Amand was very good at wiping people's memories. Yeah, he was. And he was and and he is himself um very uh he was he was he was very interested in, in his own survival at that point too because yeah. if if louis had gotten full justice for the whole thing um he would have been uh he would have been killed too mm. so yeah, he was yeah. as elusive a character as, as anybody yeah it's an interesting series. Uh, yeah, I mean, when and I love, I love that Lestat tried to create another, another uh, vampire, and that was, I, I, I think that that's one of his bandmates, the goth guy who was like in the, who was down the street while they were doing the the walking tour. Louis oh, goes back to uh, New Orleans. Well, he, he. This is what I was going to bring up. That that guy was catching rats for the stats food. Yeah. So, so the stat had stopped hunting. He he was he was eating. Yeah. He was feeding on rats instead of humans. Yeah. But he'll be back to eating humans, and and I, 
It doesn't end that way. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, you've got you've got the vampire stat. You've also got Queen of the Damned. Uh huh. Um, you've also got is it the Vampire Mond? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Several other books, isn't there? Yeah, there's Pandora. There's the Blood Canticle. There's oh, something Farm, Blackwood Farm. There's a there's a few other ones. <laughs> But, and the, the and the the interesting thing is that when you're when you're reading when you're reading them you'll see that a lot of the time the other situation in uh in New Orleans is is mentioned that there's that crazy de- demonic person named Lasher and the and the the Mayfair witches story and and there's a there's a draw there for the two of those those communities to come together at at parts it's pretty interesting and then there's yep. always i mean the talamasca oh. is basically like like uh m i six and uh interpol for uh for supernatural creatures you know they're, they're kind of like the ones that that observe but can't get involved but they they're intelligence gathering people oh also... okay like like they're more like they're more like time lords they're more like the the high council of time lords they they can watch a lot of shit but they can't get involved all right well is that well hopefully hopefully these the channel what put money into making this show will carry Darn. on making it uh, yeah. or, and not stop after the third or fourth season. Right. Like every other show seems to be happening at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just talking with Susan and those guys about the, the whole the whole uh, uh, the, the Star Trek fear that Prodigy had actually been cancelled but now it's running on Netflix. I mean, they just they just pulled it all the way off uh paramount and dropped it into netflix and there there there's the second season is there but the the fear was that, that it would go the way of um you know stargate oh. universe or one of those shows mm-hmm. that just kind of ends on a cliffhanger this is what they seem to do you, you get you get really involved in a in a series oh. you get third season watch the third season and then they sort of cancel it i think oh, what's god <clears throat> But, horrible thoughts right there oh my god you've got to keep you've got to keep the stat and uh, louis going for a while that's agreed 100 <laughs> percent. so uh some of my uh my favorite moments in this w- was the uh was the the trial um seeing seeing that and then uh and then you know they didn't only hint at claudia's death in the first season but to see that that build out that was really good and um what else there was uh there was Yeah, the 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 reminders of of the way it was in the twenties and thirties, like that that whole thing was kind of interesting too. And then um, come forward all the way till today, which is kind of what what um, <laughs> or not today, but the time of Katrina. You know that that hurricane that that hit New Orleans. That was a. I mean, that was as monst. Oh, sorry, that was as monstrous as the. As the. Uh, as the story of of the the vampires, you know. And, I mean, I love that the last scene was them riding out the storm in each other's arms 
I mean, of course that house will be flooded in no time, but they can always go hang out on the roof or whatever. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. I, like the, I mean, that's that's scene where he's um, mentally talking to all the vampires across the world. Oh my god. And saying, come, you know, telling them where he lives and all like that, and come get come, me, motherfucker. Yeah, come get me. Um, so I'm get. Uh, uh, does Louis become? Has he become one of the strongest vampires ever? Then, or no? He's just, he's just so sassy. He's willing to do so much different. He doesn't follow any fucking rules. He's just. Well, now not, he's not good. powerful, but he is. He uh. You know, he's got a hell of a lot of moxie. I mean, that that's that's because of the interview with the vampire is a successful book, what Daniel has published. Mm-hmm. And he names names. And this is why all the vampires around the world are after, you know, because he's brought the vampiric law. Vampiric law. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, come and get me. Uh, I thought that was a brilliant way to end the series. Yeah. Um, but my favorite moments are when you have the imaginary Lestat playing with Louis' mind. Oh, well, it's, yeah. it's Louis' mind just playing playing tricks on him with the with the Lestat Phantom. Mm-hmm. Um, because he warns. Well, that's I think that's his regret of what he's done. Mm-hmm. making that happen but then when Lestat arrives in real life in Paris yes the theatre um, and when he doesn't stick to the script I thought that was amazing mm. because you could tell he still loved Louis mm-hmm. he, did, he didn't want anything to happen to him he kind of did yeah and they were they say it together. They both well. We we don't know at the end of this season if the if the stat was with Louis then. Uh huh. He so said that like, he, he said that he had to go on tour. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> he could have took Louis with him. Yeah. But yeah, it was, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a a, a great season. I mean. It was a great continuation of the first season, and I liked every time each episode at the beginning of it. The sort of the where it said interview with a vampire and the red sky and whatever. Each it, it changed every time an episode was somewhere else in the world. Did you mm-hmm. notice that? You know, like the upside down Eiffel Tower when it was in Paris, and mm-hmm. um, when it was in um, Dubai. Uh, Dubai, it was the buildings of Dubai. So, yeah, I enjoyed that. But and the, and the fact that there were two two cities like this, and it mm. made it look like there were fangs. Mm. I, that, that, yeah, what a good imagery. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, are they going to call the third season Vampire Stat, or are they going to continue with the, they can't really call it Interview with the Vampire, can they? Because that's done and dusted now. Yeah, because Daniel's even not not human anymore. Yeah, well, I'm and that that there. happens in in the Queen of the Damned, actually. Oh, I mean, so that's that's two books down the the pike. I don't know. I suppose they've they've picked some other stuff out of other novels and put them in this anyway. Yeah, um, just but... just a few things, not not yeah. a lot. I mean, a little bit in the vampire Armand about the 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 chamber of torture. Yeah, that's so. That's from the vampire Armand novel, isn't uh-huh. it? Yeah. They didn't talk about the the tales of the body thief or body changing, or uh, they didn't cha- They didn't talk about any of it. it 
the, when it starts to be all about Lestat, you're you'll you'll that that's the change that will be like, you know, oh my gosh, this guy is crazy. That's fun. It's it's really fun. That Lestat rocks. He does. I mean, what was uh I think that this uh, Sam um, Sam Reed did a better job of Lestat than the uh, Tom Cruise in that other and movie. The, yeah, I mean the movie was fine. But, uh, yeah, it was. The, they rammed a lot into one movie. Yeah, but and the the other thing was is that they, uh, you know, Lestat was. Uh, was a lot more um more emotionally available yeah. than uh than Tom Cruise played him. Yeah, I mean Sam Reed had a lot more openness in Oh yeah, I think Sam I think Sam Reed's the best Lestat. Uh, he's I mean, we've had three Lestats, haven't we? So because we've had we've had the movie Queen of the Dam. Oh right, right. Uh, Stuart Anderson too. Stuart, I was. Is it Stuart Townsend? Townsend, sorry. Yeah. So. Oh, quite right. Yeah. And that was. I didn't think much of that movie, to be honest. Oh okay. But. Uh, I like the the that the, they they put they put a lot of the the. They put a lot of the the voyage of the twins in there. That was fun, but this uh, this version of Lestat is more the way he reads in the book. It's it, it ha he has a sort of sweetness and brattiness and and his regalness. He, I mean, he's not actually like a peer, but he is a, an aristocrat. So I mean, you gotta carry that royalty with you, and Tom Cruise did did an okay as like a like a gorgeous person, a gorgeous creature of the night. But um, trouble, is, trouble is with the Tom Cruise version as it's well. It's just as Tom Cruise. Yeah, but also as well, the stat has to be the one who towers over you. Oh yeah, there's that too. Tom Cruise is only three foot high, <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's only he's only a little fella. <laughs> I mean, he had his opposite. His Louis was um, Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt's what six foot what? <laughs> I, that's funny. Like, I, the type of miss, unless he had to film everything stood on a box. I don't know, but. Yeah, uh, but and also I think Jacob Anderson is is the best Louis. Yeah, from, uh, from, yeah, for sure. Great character. Um, and and why I want why this is what I want to know why do they have different coloured eyes? Because most of the vampires were brown. Really dark, you know, really uh -huh. brown eyes. And then Louis had sort of bright blue. Is it? Is it, does they? I'm trying yeah, to think of what. That's that's actually like the the description in the book. I. Yeah, you know, I'm just thinking. Do they? Do the color of the eyes come from their maker? No, they come from they come from their. Uh, Their own natural color, enhanced. Everything's enhanced. Because Santiago, had a, I think he's was sort of yellow. Yeah, but they do tend to go yellow or red when they drink a lot of blood. I no, mean, that's, I, was, I was trying. That's... I was trying to put an answer to the question. I'm thinking, is it because the stat size were blue? But they, I don't think some. I don't know if some reads as well. <laughs> I don't know, but the 
I was just looking at all these eyes and I'm going, wow. Yeah, there. I mean, that's that's one of the coolest things about watching vampire movies is like watching their eyes because you know that they're seeing more. You don't, you know, you don't often get the POV like yeah. in their mind with all of their enhancements um, through their eyes uh, very often in vampire movies. But when you do see uh, a little bit of the, of that color in their eyes, I mean, some vampires, yeah, the lore is like, they drink a lot of blood, their eyes turn yellow. They drink a lot more and their eyes turn red. Yeah. They start crying, they bleed out their eyes. Yes, yeah, so that happened a few times. Yeah, that's that's the that's in the that's in the 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 Anne Rice lore. I, it's just interesting. It's like I mean it is um, it is kind of fun to, to compare the lores and one of these days you know, we should sit down and have that kind of discussion about the various different lores because there's so many different ones. Well, there's beginning of the season, season there were, they found that other vampire, didn't they? The woman who had created, uh, she was creating vampires. Uh-huh. Um, I can't remember her name now. But, the, uh, but Claudia wanted her to co- her to come with them, uh, you know, across the world, and she threw herself on the to the fire. It was, I didn't expect that. I thought, oh, she, the old the old woman's going to go with them, but um, that was a bit of a shock when that happened. And it was good to see. I think it might be in the same episode. Uh, actor Blake Ritson. Um, in the, uh, I don't know if you remember his name. He's been in Big Finish a few times. Pl- played Adam Adamant. Oh yeah. He was. I think he was in that episode with the German soldiers and stuff like that. Oh. Uh. Yeah. A great I didn't series. recognize him by face because I, you know, I've I've listened to audios as all. Well. Um. But let's we'll see. What's his name? Blake. Blake Rickson. Rickson is it Rickson? Okay. Yeah. The. Yeah. But the. The woman who was. Uh, um, Madeline was played by. Uh, oops. Um, Roxanne Duran and uh, Antoinette is, was played by Maura Grace Athari and she was a badass that was cool anyway um, most of the actors in this were either British or Australian or Australian Yes. Yeah, some of the Australians, isn't he? Um, all the rest it's, of Britain. It's because it's because it's like you you know the only ones who can do a French accent and then uh, a Spanish accent for Santiago. <laughs> well, I say Amanda was British as well. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, that was it. Was great. It was really really great. Yeah. Well, um, anything. Anything else, or should we go to final sense score? Uh, yeah, we can. Um, I just, I would just encourage you guys to watch it. Uh, with the the hope for the future that that we do see the rest of Lestat's story, because yeah. that's going to be really cool. And the main, the, the main problem with with watching it, it's on it's AMC, isn't it? Yeah, AMC Plus or whatever. Um, like over here in the UK, you don't. We don't have them sort of channels. No, so. I I ended up buying it on iTunes, so it's just it just shows up on my on my 
Well, the the first season when it was on I AMC, it was on AMC, it took about maybe just under a year before it appeared on normal television uh, channel or in the UK as uh-huh. a, as a new series. So this uh, second series will mostly take another eight months to a year before it appears on terrestrial TV as a new series. Oh, it's, but but you guys get it as a as a terrestrial series. Um, I I don't have AMC Plus, but um, I know that I, don't, that's, I know that it won't be ever shown on on the the over the air channels that I I I listen to and watch. I don't know. It's strange. It is. So- and the so, other thing that's really interesting is that your uh your uh characters focusing in on the eyes is something that we're gonna do we're gonna be talking a little bit about also yeah, yeah. in black mass um yeah. I think that it's just really um and our 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 lee over there he's he's friends with Anthony Ainley, and nobody had more like close up eye shots than the master. You know, it, it, sometimes it is all about the eyes, the eyes being the window, you know. Was friends with Anthony Ainley, of course. Not is now, because he's, he's no longer with us. Yeah, okay. But <laughs> but, but the, the reality of that relationship was there, is there. Anyway. So, Susan. So, I just love, uh, love these so much i love all the episodes i don't find any of them boring or slow i i i was you know the 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 first season the first two episodes were slow but the second season nothing was there wasn't much gore but you know there there may be in the next one enough for lee but the 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 reality is is like I just, I find her writing so sensuous. I find the characters so delightful. You actually love these characters. You actually do, like, get drawn in to Louis' sadness and Lestat's hijinks. His sort of happy hijinks. I mean, this is a vampire with a sense of humor. And and a really powerful personality and um and you're really sucked into Daniel Malloy's writing and like that whole that whole last bit of um of like correcting the the news reader and calling him a hack mm-hmm. I thought that was just super fun and I you know, I I'd, I think that that's something that Anne Rice actually did. So I think that that's actually from her. So um, she <laughs> was there in 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 a little microcosm. Anyway, um, love it. Ten out of ten. <laughs> um, hats of. Make stage makeup for the Teatro de Vampire. And yeah. over to you, Lee. What's your final scene score? Uh, well, I'm positive I gave the first season a, 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 you know, a raging 10 out of 10 because um, I loved it so much. This one, I love it so much as well, but because I want more go. Mm-hmm. I want more Sex. vampire scenes, which the, the, they seem to be lacking. Uh, this gets just just it gets a nine. Oh, well, that's so great! That's... You know, nine beheaded Santiago's out of ten. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, for me, it just needs more gore and more sex. Okay, and it had been a ten, but it still drew me in because great actors. 
Jacob Anthony. Sweet, and sorry. Yeah. So that is it. That is our uh, review of the interview of a vampire season two or part two, whatever you want to call it. Um, hey. You guys, have you seen it? Have you been able to get, you know, see it? If you have, let us know. Leave a comment below on the video. You'll find this video all over the social media because we share it about. Um, because we like to we like to share. Um, also, if you'd like to join us, leave a comment on the video wherever you found it. I would like to join you guys doing what you do. Uh, but you just be 18 plus. That's sort of the thing what we say. Because things like this, you need to be a vampire is an 18 plus sort of thing. And and because uh, you know, we we never shy away from sex. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Our, our a lot it. of our a lot of our uh of our reviews are about de- things that are dead sexy, you know. Sexy, dead violent, dead gory. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Just let us know. Um, all you need is a working camera and a working microphone on the device you use. Just leave a comment. Let us know what you if you would want to be on with us, and also. Let, let Susan get her bell out. There we go. Um, if you do subscribe, or when you do subscribe to, on the YouTube channel, press the bell notification button, of course, and you'll get notified every time we put something up. So that's it, is it, Susan? I believe so. Cool. Thank you. So until next time, I'm going to be listening to the creatures of the night. What beautiful music they make. Oh. My, little tribute, my little tribute to Bella Lugosi there. <laughs> Bye for now.